Hi, this one is for those of you that are struggling to use the plastic cards to scrape out rocks. I have done rather a lot of them over the, over the years, although I only got back to watercolour painting two years, four or five months ago, having had a break for 14 or 15 years to do oil painting. But before that I spent years doing watercolours and I got onto the card mainly through John Darlison, who used to demonstrate for Carl Shorten and Wellington Art Group. And it was a, he did a, a, demo, a demo of, uh, well, it was a full imperial watercolour, 200 pound Saunders paper I think he used, and he wet both sides of it so it didn't dry out too quickly. And I was mesmerised when he showed the card trick. And I use it, if you want to paint your rocks, by using uh, brushes, that's fine. It's uh, just not for me. So, um, I'll show you the one I did a couple of days ago. I've got it on my little tablet over here. There, yeah. so if you can see that in my water jar. Can you see that? I'll just zoom in. It's a very bright day, and uh, let's see if I can get that. So that's what I did. Um, it's my sort of scene. So I'm going to do a similar one to it, maybe alter the background a little bit and just make it... Um, well, we'll see how we go. I'll just come back up to the paper. I got my, my delivery of 150 sheets of Fabriano this morning from Curtis Ward a week late. No fault of theirs. Entirely fault of the post office. Uh, but anyway, I've got it now. <coughs> so, let's start with a pencil, just so give us a guide as to where we're going with this. Come over here, and then down here with the rocky... rocky stream, and we can put different planes in here, and we'll do some hilly background and some other planes there, some trees, whatever. Refresh this. Right, okay. And we will put this side subordinate to to the right hand side. Sorry, I thought I lose my thread when I I start to draw. So this is just a just a just a guide. I'm not going to stick to it. I'm, I'm just going to make it up as go along. It's pointless doing elaborate drawings when you're going to paint over them. Now, here's my palette. This is the Ziploc bag. If you are in the, you live in the UK and you're watching this, um, Smiths found uh, uh, stationers, news agents, they, they don't do them. But Wilkinson's do apparently. Wilkinson's, it's a supermarket. Uh, there aren't that many of them, but they're very, very good. They, they seem to be a bit above the quality that Woolworths used to be. And I go there for my beer mix and cheap toothpaste and stuff like that. Or if we go to the cinema in Sutton, pick up some chocolate raisins and stuff to munch through the show. And apparently they do them. When I'm going, going there to get me beer mix uh, next week, and I've got some in the bag here, some yellow, so I'm going to have to remove that. And it, it's a brilliant uh, solution to keeping the paste paint a bit moist when you're not using it. Otherwise, it dries out and, and you're scrubbing away at it to get it to loosen it up. But this way, it's a good compromise between tube paint and a bone dry paint. So I'm quite happy with this. And so thanks to Maria Kellner who came up with the idea. And it's it's a it's a brilliant way, so there we are. Right, we'll do a simple sky, but before we do, I'll show you my tell you what my palette is. It's a lemon yellow, which seems to have gone everywhere. Lemon yellow, raw sienna, lizard and crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paints grey, and burnt sienna. 
one of my favourite colours. Mid tissue, handy, hair dryer. Two inch hake. And I know some of you are struggling with it. It's not an easy brush to come to terms with. It has a life of its own. It holds an inordinate amount of water that is there to trap the unwary. But it's well worth the, the practice because it does so many things. And its greatest attribute is that it stops you fiddling. It's a large brush, two inch wide nearly, and you can't do too much fiddling with it, which is the bane of beginners and, and even more advanced painters. It, it's, uh, we all fiddle, we never know quite when to stop, but get away from the small brush can do everything. You can, the, this, this one does amazing things. So well worth persevering with it. Well, I'll put a bit of a, you'll see how nice and moist that is. It's almost straight out of the tube. Um, this is the brush that's losing all the hairs. So I'll just just go over. And I'll put in, I think a bit of a lizard in the sky, lower down, why not? A bit of lemon yellow. Now, a little bit of advice here. When you're doing your clouds or your, or your trees, there's clouds in between the trees, don't fit your clouds in between the bits of landscape. Get them going behind. There's nothing worse than blobs of, cloud, blobs of clouds, light or dark, that don't go behind anything. They're just there, there and there. Regular pattern. Clouds come from behind other objects in the landscape or behind from behind each other so remember that now you're going to paint over that so we'll put a bit of blue in I think we won't put it too too uh, deep but just a bit darker over the top there because that's where you'll find your your darkest blue. And now I'll mix a bit of light red with that and make a Do. I'll put a bit, no I won't, I won't touch the water yet, I'll do that at the end. Now the, the joy about doing this sort of landscape is it, it gives plenty of scope for painting, putting trees hanging onto the cliffs or the, or the rocky slopes. So let's put a bit of a background in now, so we've got a bit of, bit of blue and a bit of red. It needs to be thick enough so that it actually registers and doesn't disappear into the into the wet. Go behind, just a little bit. And we'll put some lemon yellow and see a raw sienna in there. Just to show some another plane. Oh, this brush is really losing its hairs. So let's, uh, a bit of warmer sienna, raw burnt sienna. Okay, now into that we can put other, other bits and pieces. I say bits and pieces, it's just, it's just breaking up that background. I just, I don't want it too flat. There we 
So that just seems to be okay. Uh, right. The what I don't like about what's happening with this paper is it's it's leaving a mark where I put, instead of it blending, it's causing a demarcation, and I don't really like that. So I'm going to just go over this again and see if we can do something about that. See what happens to that. See if you, you work from your own material. I, I work from hundreds of photos that I've got of my paintings, and they all turn out different. So don't worry about repeating yourself because you never will. Not especially with watercolour, because watercolour is so unpredictable. Right, let's get a nice slope on. So start with light, bit of green. Ah. They do wear out eventually. So I want to put plenty of colour in this, so we we'll just and then we we'll just go to dark. That's really dark there, and I'll put trees and stuff sticking out into that. All right, coming with some grass. Vary the colours. And this is where we're going to put, start putting in the darks. Red. Oh, not like that. These are going to be the rocks. See, so if you do an elaborate drawing, you're only going to cover it up. I'm trying to encourage you to do sort of impressionist type of painting. A bit more dark in here. Some warmer colours. Nice dark. This is really lovely and thick, juicy, juicy paint now. Look at that. Right, okay, that, that'll do for, for that. Now let's go in with the card. Now, I'm just going to, to just scrape out some bits on the edge of this rocky slope here. And by having all the different colours, you can get some lovely effects. Now, this is light here, because I'm going to put dark trees on around so I'm overdoing it, I'm not no subtlety with this. But this could be anywhere. Oh let's uh bigger is becoming into the foreground. Oh, then this is dark now, a big so when I scrape the paint, the dark goes to the underneath and forms a shadow, whereas the light catches the top. Hey, look at that. Now, having said many times that a little goes a long way, a lot goes even further. But look, it's just so simple, but just be creative with it. Those darks are now coming into their their own. Right, now we're just going to do the, the other side. 
I can put some bracken and fern or whatever on this. <coughs> I didn't want to climb up there. Right now let's start on the other side now. So you now see we've got the sky coming from behind or well, even over and on that hill, that slope there. So we've got to think of a colour for the other side now. Let's just get my tablet working again. Right, okay. Uh, so we'll have we'll have a contrast of a bit of dark there. So a good dark, Payne's grey. And burnt sienna. I just want it to be a demarcation between a bit more blue in there, I think. Now let's get more brown. Ah, see, when that happens, there's much you can do about it other than paint over it. Now we'll put in some warmer colours. Some grasses. Water on the brush. Even some blues in there and some neat reds. Yellows back in there, making the green mixing with the blue, dark, but warm dark. Right, we've got a nice rocky colour there. You know, my paint is almost liquid. Look, it's, it's all soft and daddy, it's gorgeous. Right, okay, let's get the old card going on there. And start from the, the dry bits. It's a very warm day in London. Well, by our standards, anyway. See, you get the lovely sparkle with those colours now. And I, because of this palette being so moist, I can get some rich colours quickly, but I don't have to throw the whole lot away when I pack up for the, for the day. I'll probably only do this one. Today. Right, well there we are. So we've got a nice rocky stuff there. Now we're going to go clean the brush. We're going to go really hard now. Still using the, the hake. I want some nice rich greeny. Look, look, look. Look. Almost out of the tube. Look at that. So we can just do this. Leave some air holes, birdie holes. Nice and dark. Leave a bit of shadow under that tree there. It's a nice, try and get a nice shape for this. Yeah, there, I suppose. Okay, I, I can put some detail in there with some some branches and stuff. But I'm leaving some plenty of space there between the foliage so that the the, the branches will show. So let's come down there with a bit, bit more behind that, behind those rocks there.
So now I'm just making this up as I go along, and you can do the same. It's all basic stuff. And then we'll do something to highlight those rocks there. Okay. Greeny. Right, not going to be a lot of uh, detail there. So I'll mix a bit of Payne's Grey. stuff in here that's almost oil consistency there so just go for it it's only a bit of paper nothing's ever wasted you can always paint on the over it in, a, in a, an acrylic or something but every painting that you think is not so good is one step nearer the one that will be good Now, because it's in the distance, we want bluer. So, the rogue hairs. I like those colours behind there. Okay. So that, I think, looks quite reasonable. It's the burnt sienna with the blue that I love. Oh. Oh, okay. Nice scrubby trees, gorse, just a bit of texture in there, showing clumps of grass, whatever you, whatever you want. Now we're getting some really lovely colour in there. Oh, I just want to just go over that bit there to show the edge of that cliff. Just hanging on for dear life. Right, okay, so, so far so Good. And we'll have some nice greeny trees here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to do much there. That hasn't really blended, has it? So probably paper's not dry, uh, wet enough there. So we'll go to a bit more of the similar same similar stuff on the left hand side. Just a touch of water. No. Uh, that's there, so far, so good. And we'll have a biggie, biggie there. Nice dark in there, really thick. Something here. Some dark bits in there. Right, okay. I I don't. I've probably overdone the trees on that. See, so I get carried away. I enjoy that that doing that so much that I put another one in. I'm going to put some little figures in. Now, uh, I'll just do a bit of, I've got my water to do, but I want to, to do some branches and trunks. So I'll use the blue and the, and the brown. Plenty of water, but thick, thick mix. So it just shows now that's why I left that open there so that I could show some of these chunks and they will show 
through the air holes, the bird holes, which leaves space for your birds to go through. Okay, that'll do there. Let's uh, put something in there. Just flicks and bits and pieces, just to add a bit of interest to your painting. Just little bits and pieces that just just add. The the nothing really. They're, they're just bits of interest. As the viewer goes through the painting, they can just latch on to just all these little bits. bits of wood, twigs, branches, ferns, or just, just bits of grass. All just adds to, to the overall picture and you can add little bits where you've, uh, you haven't maybe got a lot of, lot of detail and you just add a bit. Right, now I reckon that's dry enough to do with the water. I'll clean my brush and I'll clean the middle of my palette. And before I pack this up, I'll give it a, sp a spray and it will be ready for the next time. Now, it has been mentioned about mildew mould going on your, your damp paint. Well, of course, if you don't use your palette and you put a lot of water on it, there is a tendency for mould to grow. But I, I, I'm doing, I'm, I, this is very rarely more than two days go by before I open my palette up again. But if, if I'm painting on using acrylic, I've got a sponge under a membrane which I leave soaked. And that will go mildewy, mouldy. But you can mitigate to a certain extent the effect by adding some drops of ammonia. But you can't leave it indefinitely. But with this, two or three days, no problem, in my experience. Right now, I want to just put in some sky colour, a bit of blue, a bit of red. And OK, that's supposed to be the, the water. Um, and, and because we've got dark behind it, we'll... Well, like there's a backdrop to it. We could I put some of that in? Well, I'm not going to do any more than that. I'll put the birds in. The birds. Uh, you see that? That's another bit of a device, really. By Filling the sky is at least uh, half the picture, so with nothing going on. So put some birds in, and that sort of just adds. Whoops. Okay, I think I could probably do a text, bit, of, bit of stuff in there. Uh, take the hair out and just. Just a bit of and we can put some on that back top there.
So we, we've just put a bit of detail in there. So that I'll sign it. That that's all I can do. So I hope you got the, you understood a bit more about doing the rocks. But really, you've got to practice for yourself. It's a lot easier than you think. So this is a sort of a tutorial. Let's, let's put a put a bit of a man up here. He's climbed up here, so we've been attacked by the woods. Got a rucksack on his back there. Okay, so there he is. Just to, just give scale to everything. No more than that. Right, let's uh, put it in the blue mounts. So there we are. Similar to the one I did did before. I'll show you what I did before. And there it is. Now you'll see that it's totally different. Uh, this is new in, but very similar. See, they never come out the same, so it doesn't doesn't matter. Oh, if I can just bring that round square, square, and more square. So if you want to zoom in. We'll look at our distance, so I've just added that there because I think to get out of the, the problem with that demarcation between the blue and the yellow. So there are the trees, all dry. Look at the colours I've managed to get in that landscape there. And when you scrape it, it just adds, adds an interest to the whole thing. You know, there's a load of colour. You saw me pile it on. But being watercolour and the paper as it dries, look, it dry brushes. I get really excited about doing these. Just to go back to some estuaries, won't I? Some Lake District stuff. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Have a go, keep practising, don't get disheartened, don't give up. I didn't give up. I didn't start with any great ability. I learned the ability as I went along by doing lots of it. And I've still got a long way to go. Thanks for watching and bye bye.